the libero for Penn State to start that rally. Hewitt with the kill. Rubio Tenero has been very effective for Hawaii, but we'll see if she breaks out the jump spin. Her knee's been giving her some trouble. She wasn't able to do it much last weekend, but here it is. Then the service error evens up the match. The defending champs got knocked down early. And the defending champs respond in kind in set number two, 25-18. Grab the opener 25-23. Penn State in the second set, 25-18. Dave showed you now joining us courtside. And Dave, what was your message to your team there during the intermission? Well, my message was that we're playing with them. We just got off to a slow start in game two, and we got too far behind. We made a little run at the end, but we're doing things we, we want to do. We, doing things that we uh, we talked about. We're, uh, you know, slowing Hodge down. She's not hitting that greater percentage. Uh, Wilson's not hitting great percentage. We've got to do a better job side outing, and, uh, you know, we're right in the match. Coach, do you think about spinning the dial at all? Kanani's having a little trouble hitting against Blair Brown, or do you like, for the most part, what's been going well, on I, with this matchup? I like our block defense. Uh, we're, we're touching a lot of balls. Like I say, they're hitting... Uh, you know, not what they used to hit, and uh, you know, I like the matchup. Kanani will get on track, uh, trust me. You'll watch her this game, I think she'll go, uh, she'll do much better. All right, thank you very much, Dave. All right. The head coach for the Rainbow Wahine, and let's take a look at the Coke Zero game track. And Penn State coming in, the best hitting team in the nation, at close to 400, down to 240, what uh, Shoji was referring to right there with the defense. Yeah, and most of those blocks, that 7-0 advantage, came in the second set when Penn State served a little tougher and Hawaii wasn't able to control that serve as well. They fell out of system, weren't able to run their offense as normal. But even then, Hawaii made it a game in that second set. They were way down and then had a big streak themselves. They are capable of beating this team. The two superstars right now, below average numbers for them, but uh, we've got at least two more sets and maybe three to play for Kanani Danielson and Megan Hodge to pick them up. Way below average for both. Minus for Danielson versus her normal 327, and then Hodge hitting almost 400 on the year. It appears that the matchup are the same. Neither coach has chosen to spin the dial and start with a different server than in the first two sets. So we should still see Blair Brown, 6-5, blocking against Kanani Danielson. It sounds like Shoji is trusting her to pick up the game. They'll get it going. In the meantime, their defense has been working very well. He wanted to stick with the defense and expects the offense to come. Pilico serve starts it out. And a whistle, and an inadvertent one, because one of the officials thought the play was over, and Penn State actually had popped it up. Brown missed it with her arms, but it came right up off her shoe. That is illegal, not an illegal, but a good play in volleyball. Referee blew the whistle, so they have to replay it. Joan Powell and Kevin Cole. And Choji can't believe that that one didn't go Hawaii's way. Now replay the point. Danielson out of the back. Block slowed it down. Hodge rejected. Glass going to go back to Megan Hodge off the tips. Danielson was there defensively again. The block able to slow it down just enough. Wilson, no, tremendous Hawaii defense. Hawaii broke the plane, Point Penn State. Yep. She's such a big jumper, Amber Kaufman is, that she thought I had, she thought she had a fraction of the ball there to touch, but if it hasn't crossed the plane of the net or broken the plane of the net, she can't block that. Another Penn State block, that's eight on the night for the Nittany Lions. And Dave Shoji calls the timeout and he is still irritated about that whistle early that has given Penn State some momentum and the early lead. The quick timeout at two zip. Dave Shoji still upset about the whistle. 
on the very first point of the mat of the uh, set that they ended up having to replay. And forced him to call a timeout at 2-0. Burnham, a very early one. He, I'm sure, hopes that he won't that, come back to regret that, needing two later on for some reason. He's looking, Hard to tell from that angle whether it came up yeah. off the shoe of Blair Brown. He's looking to press row to see if anybody could give him a heads up off the replay, which really was inconclusive. Aria Wilson gets the kill. And the thing I liked about what Wilson did, she had the patience to not just go up and hit the overpass. She made the pass. Then she got to play a, her normal role in the offense and attack with the quick tempo there. Sent back by Penn State. Farrell. Quillico there. Ooh. Hodge. What a high angle from Hodge. That's not a good matchup. Hodge against Cubio Tenero going up and around on the line. Ten kills now for Hodge. Farrell slowed by the block, but then they lost it in traffic. Point Hawaii. Yeah, Wilson not able to look up and catch the ball as she was running off the net. Blockers have to think about two things, tracking the ball, finding out where it is, and run off the net so you can run back and be a good attacker. Kaufman serving. Glass to Hodge off the tips, point Penn State. Off to the hot start, Ariel Wilson to serve. She was on track coming into the match to set a new NCAA single season hitting record. Coming in hitting over 550. Cubio Tenero able to cut by the block for the kill. She gets some heat on that. Even Coach Sophie has said, if it gets past the block, it's probably not coming back when she gets a good swing on it. And that was, that had some steam. Blair Brown out of the back, never got it over. Brown still fighting through some issues tonight. Hitting just a buck 88. And after that last error, it dropped even more, well below her average also. Nice cue there by Penn State. Kanani Danielson pushes it deep and long. Oh, she had it too, about six inches long. She had the right instinct. Hawaii showing good patience here. They were getting blown out and comes come right back strong to pull in. Mufua, out of the back row on that attack from Hawaii. Now Hodge, Megan Hodge started to heat up. She's been the most outstanding player in the last two championship runs for Penn State. And certainly one of the favorites, along with Destiny Hooker of Texas for National Player of the Year honors and the two good friends trying to meet up in the finals on Saturday night. And the voters are probably watching. They don't decide till after the semifinal matches, but before the final, because the, the award is announced tomorrow night at the All-American Banquet. <laughs> Hooker made a good case for herself to finish up her body of work. And now Hodge has a chance to, along with Alicia Glass, the setter for Penn State, and uh, Ashley yeah. Engel, the part-time hitter, part-time setter for Texas. We both think that the setters ought to be in the discussion in that regard. And Alicia Glass perhaps should get a Distinguished Service Award for yeah. her four years of service at Penn State, where they have led the country every year in hitting percentage, and every year it has gone up. And Coach talks about what a tough player she is dealing with injuries she's had over her career. He would vote her one of the four or five on his all-tough team. And if anybody would know, it would be somebody like Russ Rose, who, if he wins tonight, will become the third member of the Thousand Win Club. Fatima Balza with the kill, and Russ Rose doing some coaching over there. In his 31st season, he's always got that book in front of him, jotting down his stats. 
His Russ Rose stats. Not anything like, Kurtz, what you see on the actual stat sheet. Yeah, he says I have my own stats because I want to win. And most of what he tracks is what didn't happen, what the players didn't do that they were supposed to do. So if you miss a dig, that's part of his stat sheet. And it doesn't show up on anybody else's and certainly not on the media stats. Blair Brown with the pound. And again, making the case for Glass. Doing a nice job of getting Blair Brown going in these last few swings, getting her some open looks at the net. Brown now serving. Glass able to push it over. And now Penn State's got some momentum. Starts with the control block from Glass, then Hodge on defense, back to Glass. 